Amen. Well, I, I, if you could um, give a round of applause for Jill as she comes tonight. In Jesus' name. Uh, my mother-in-law, Jill Chu. She's not Chinese, she's Scottish. <laughs> Get him a new what? Thank you. Very fancy, I can't really read it. Anyway, we're here really basically to honour these distinguished looking people. We have Wonderful looking people on the left here, so it's all about them tonight. So because we are doing our handing out of the certificates, I thought to teach just briefly on the power of the Word of God, because I thought it was relevant to what they have done, and we believe that they did discover the power of the Word of God. So I just want to talk about that for a little while, because it's a passion. I think it should be everybody's passion. You know, the Word of God is like no other word on the planet. There is no, it is supernatural. We're so privileged to be dealing in it. And you know, if you think about it, when someone or you share the gospel, which is the Word of God, the message of salvation, <clears throat> that word has the power in it to bring a dead human spirit instantly to life. You know, we get really excited when we hear of the dead being raised. You know, that's the ultimate ministry. You know, how many people have you raised from the dead, brother? You know, <laughs> salvation is that. It is the ultimate raising from the dead. Because the other one, you'll go again sometime. But when you're raised from the dead spiritually, that is done by the word of God. That is the power of the word of God. And you're brought to life and you're connected to the creator of the universe. I mean, what could be more amazing than that? So, you know, that's why we see in Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And it is the gospel is the power of God unto healing. The gospel is the power of God unto deliverance. The gospel is the power of God to anything you need. Because Jesus covered it all. So that is the power of the word of God. And how does it work? Well, the word has power in it. It says in Timothy that it's God breathed. You know, people say, oh, you know, men wrote it. No, they actually took a pen. But the Holy Spirit inspired. Inspire means to breathe in. The word, this word we hold, whether it be plastic or paper these days, has got the life of God breathed in it. So that word we speak to the unsaved person has got power in it. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. But in addition, when a word is spoken in faith, the Holy Spirit is immediately activated to bring it to pass. He adds that power. So you have the synergy of the power of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit coming together and it's like a supernatural chemical reaction. And that person comes alive. That's how the, you know, the power of the word is totally amazing. And you know, that's why, you know, when we get a hold of a new believer, we immediately say, you need to get a Bible. You need to read the Bible. Not because that's what nice little Christians do, you know, now when you're a Christian, you've got to read your Bible and they go, hmm, you know. They have no idea what awaits them because it is, it's the most exciting adventure you can possibly embark on is getting into the Word of God. It's actually the handbook for living. You know, when I was a child, most houses had a Bible. Whether they read them or not, you know, Granny had given one or Auntie Mary had given one or they'd inherited it. Now very few houses would have Bibles. There are Bibleless homes, and you may be the only Bible they'll ever read or they're going to read. So it is the handbook for living. That's why when you pick up a newspaper tomorrow morning and you look at the disasters in the world, that's all because they haven't taken the handbook and read the handbook and seen how to do life. So, you know, we are privileged to have the manual for living. You know, when you buy a product from a car down to an electric toothbrush, 
It has a manual that goes with it. A manufacturer made it, and therefore he gives you a book to tell you how to make it work at maximum efficiency and how to fix it when it breaks down. And that's what we've got here. God's manual for life. How to live at the best, as John was saying, in prosperity in all things, and then how to fix us when we go wrong. You know, we have in here a comprehensive instruction book for family, for marriage, for raising kids, for raising difficult kids, <laughs> for work, for finance. Everything is in here. A medical book, it's got every single thing. God has left nothing out. There's no thing where you'll go and pray and he brings something to God and he says to Jesus, Oh, oh, we didn't work out that one. What are we going to do? No, God has thought of everything. And you know, just because it was written, it was penned 2,000 or how many thousands of years ago, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that it's not relevant today. It is eternally valid. It is always the truth. You know, this word is forever settled in heaven. It, will be, it is the truth, and it always will be the truth. And it is that truth that will set you free. No matter what you're facing tonight, we're all facing something. And in this world we live in, the way it is, we will face stuff until we go. Either up that way or in the box or whatever we go. We will face stuff. You know, I was saying to Anne the other day, you know, we seem to face a lot of stuff and say, is this ever going to end? And she said, no, that's the way it's going to be. And I said, oh, okay, right. But there is an answer in here. You know, there is an answer in here. So we must approach this book with reverence. We must approach it as the amazing book that it is. You know, in here we have supernaturally how God got it to us. It's very interesting to see how the Bible came into being. But you know, in here we have the heart of God for us, for his people. We have his ways, his principles, his feelings, his emotions, his mindset. Everything that God is has been put in here. You know, it said in the beginning was God and the word was God. This is him. This is his thoughts for you and me. And it's personal. You know, this is written for you. It is personal. You know, God, people say, you know, God is very mysterious. You never quite know what he's going to do. Well, he does do things sometimes you think, ooh, didn't see that coming. But basically, God is not mysterious. He has told us the way he is. He has told us. Is it not very? Is that okay? You hear that? Okay. Ooh. He has told us what he's like. He, you know, everything, I, I, I counted, I looked at my Bible, and what was it? There's 1,847 pages in this Bible. Now, there are some notes. That is God telling us what he's like. We can't say he's mysterious. You know, he has told us. And why, basically, has, written, has he written this for us? Well, it's how to live, but the thing that God wants for us, most of all, is to know him. And it tells us that in the Bible, you know, we maybe think we're on the planet to save people, to minister to people. That's better. Minister to people. But the first priority is to know God. If we know God, then we can do all, all the other stuff. If we get close to him, know his heart, then we're effective in this world. You know, in John 17, 3, it says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. This is Jesus praying to the Father. Eternal life is the word zoe, means the God kind of life. The way God lives it, the way God does life. Say, this is the life that he, they know you. That is the first priority. You know, you can be sitting on holiday on a balcony, sipping, a, well, I won't say this for us, but, you know, people sit drinking their mind-altering substances on the balcony. <laughs> and what do they say? Ah, the sun. This is the life. Don't we? We've said that. <laughs> it's not. This is the life. This is the life. And that's what God, this is what he's telling us. Do it my way, and then you will have, you will have peace. You'll have trouble, Jesus said, and we've noticed. But we get over it. He said, I've overcome it. Don't worry, you'll come out and you'll go higher. The one thing I have noticed at my old age is that when you go through a hassle, when you go through trouble, if you hang on, sometimes by your fingernails, you'll come out stronger. 
you'll come out higher. You'll come out closer to him. And the next trial that comes, you remember that last trial, and you, you, you stick even closer the next time. I sometimes wonder why the devil doesn't cop on to that one. You know. There's another scripture I think is lovely about knowing God. Jeremiah 9.23, it says, Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast, in other words, if you want to be proud of anything, this is what you do, is this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love. So you know, God is quite insistent that knowing him is really the essence of life. You know, so that's saying no matter how smart you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how powerful you are, all of that will pass one day. The only thing that matters is knowing God. And you know, when I, I was sort of preparing this, I thought, do I really know God? Can we ask ourselves, how well do we know God? How close are we to him? How precious is he to us? What does he mean to us? And we need to really evaluate because he's just told us it's the top priority in our lives. And if we have any question, we need to adjust it. It's important, okay? So how do we get to know him? Well, I'm basically I'm going to talk about the word for a few minutes. But the, one of the other, the two ways I think are major. One is prayer. And you know, we hear the word prayer, and we remember prayer at school. But prayer is just, you know what it is, hanging out with God. <laughs> it's communication, it's talking to him. Talking and communicating with God. And it should be a two-way conversation. You know, my prayer time used to be, I'd get before God and have a good moan. And I would say, God, I can't take this anymore. This person is getting worse instead of better. I've been praying for 10 years and look at it, look what's happening. And, you know, God really doesn't want to know that. What did he say? Talk to your mountains. And do you do this in Bible school? Don't talk about your mountains. He doesn't want to know. He said, talk to them and I'll shift them. Yeah. He doesn't really, you know, there's a scripture, and I, I didn't look it up before it came out. It says, you weary me, weary me with your complaining. God knows what you're going through. He's given us the way out. It says Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Confession means saying the same thing as him. We go before the Father and we say, this person needs to shift. I command and decree that that situation change in Jesus' name. We talk faith. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So I used to have a good moan, and then the other I gave him my list. My Santa list, and you want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to do this, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, that was really my prayer time. But you know, that's not at all. What, what did Jesus say we to do with prayer? First of all, we say, our Father, hallowed be thy name. We worship him. That was the blueprint. It wasn't meant to be our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But we said at school, it was an outline for prayer. But isn't it interesting, the top priority in that is hallowed. We worship you. Worship God first. No matter what's going on, worship God. Get into his presence. All our prayers, even the, the quicker ones, first thing in the morning, we should touch his heart. We should touch heaven. You know, perfunctory functional prayers are insulting to our Father. You know, if you have, like, say you and your husband, if you got together in the morning and you say, right, I want to come and talk to you about the children, I want you to talk about the budget, and I want to talk to you about painting the sitting room, and we'll deal with that, and then we'll talk again tomorrow morning. Now, <laughs> What kind of relationship would that we you know we do that to God? Let's be honest. I used that and then I thought I'd had my quiet time. It wasn't quiet at all. I was rabbiting on making a noise. I never gave him any opportunity to speak. It should be a communication where we express our gratitude and our love to him. We present our situation but in faith. And we should come away, as I said, having touched heaven, knowing that he heard us and knowing that he'll deal with it. So that is communication, you know, we must, you know, and we invite him into the rest of the day. I used to have this, well, I've had my devotional time, and then I'll get on with the rest of the day. No, God wants to come into all of our day. You know, in Acts says 17, 
In him we live and move and have our being. We should carry God in our heart the whole day long. We should be communing with him. I never understood the scripture, pray without ceasing. I thought, how on earth can you pray without ceasing? If I used to be a school teacher. How could I pray without ceasing? But you keep them, you know, you keep in that contact, your heart. You know when you're in love with someone? You, they're in your heart all day long. We should be in love with God. He is, he is the essence and the center and the core of our existence. He should always be in our heart and we should have that communication with him all day long. So we shouldn't, you know, leave that place and think, well, that's my God time and move on. We acknowledge him in the Proverbs, it says, in all our ways. Bring him into everything. Patricia was sharing with me last Sunday about, she, you know, she started just, I don't know, maybe you've always done it, Patricia, for a parking place. And, you know, why not? I mean, around here, you do need God to get a parking place, big time. <laughs> It's a miracle every Sunday if you get one. But, you know, we acknowledge him. We should acknowledge him in everything. I think women find that easier than men because they're all macho and I'll do it myself. But, you know, we should acknowledge God in everything that we do. He is interested in the little things. He, you know, he's interested not just in the major things. He's interested in anyth- everything. You know, in, in John 15, 5, I find such a comforting scripture. Without me, you can do nothing. And I say, that's true, God. I can't do anything without you. But I can do all things through you. Now, there's one scripture that's one of my favorite scriptures. It's Acts 4, 13, just showing how the disciples did, you know, the, the word, getting into the word. Well, I'll just mention that first. The prayer and the word. We should approach the word that we read during the day with the same reverence as we do prayer. You know, we should go before the Lord and ask for revelation. We don't, you know, people say, do you have a Bible reading plan? And I said, well, no, but I'd be studying something at that particular time. There'll be an area I'll be studying. But I remember in the old days we used to get taught, have a Bible reading plan. You read something from the old, something from the new, and a psalm. And that's it, you know. (laughs) And I never found that satisfactory somehow. But, you know, we should be in that word and just absorb it. We should feed on it. I think Joanna said last week, don't skim read the Bible. You see things on on TV advertising. How to read the Bible, the whole Bible in two weeks. Well, what what do you get out of that? Absolutely nothing. So we must read it. You know, it says in Colossians 2, 3, in him, in Jesus, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This is full of treasure and we have to dig for it. You know, treat the word with great reverence and, you know, spend that time in it. Meditate on it, study it, and it will feed you and your spirit man will grow strong and your soul will lose its baggage. Great things happen when you read the Bible. So those are the two ways we get to know God is prayer and the word. But I just wanted to look for a minute at Acts 4.13 if we have it on the, in the screen. It's a comment about the disciples. Now, how did they function? They spent all their time with Jesus, so they were communicating him two-way all day long. We have to do it now in prayer and talking to him. We don't physically see him. And then they got the word downloaded all day. You know, if you read a Bible that's in red, you know they have the bit, the words of Jesus in red. There's an awful lot of red. Jesus spoke constantly to them. He was mentoring them, guiding, teaching, training, cleaning them up. And you know, that's the two ways, communication and the word. And there's a a, a wonderful scripture, Acts 14. It's actually the, the rulers and the scribes who were really hated them because they thought, here's another one like this Jesus. But it said, now, talking about these rulers, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. Isn't it great we don't need any qualifications to be followers of Jesus? They, they, were, the, they were the foundation of the whole New Testament, of the New Testament church, and they had no education. Isn't that encouraging? No leaving cert. They marveled. And they realized, now this is the leaders, they realized that they had been with Jesus. 
What did that mean? They saw Jesus in those men. They saw his calm authority. They saw his peace. They saw his anointing. They saw his presence. Now they weren't complimenting. They wanted rid of them. They were trying to get them in prison. But it was a compliment. I think there is no greater compliment people could pay us that we are like Jesus That's what God's plan is for us, to be conformed to the image of his son, to walk as Jesus walked. And the way we get it is spend time, true time in his presence, communicating, letting him download into us and reading his word. Not I used to read the word when I used to teach a lot more. I used to read to get a teaching and I thought I was studying the word. That's not, it wasn't feeding me particularly. I was doing it to give it out. We need to feed to do it for ourselves, to change ourselves, okay? So they realized they had been with Jesus. You know, how do we be with Jesus in prayer and in the word of God? You know what that meant? Jesus had rubbed off on them. You know, if somebody wins something, you say, oh, let some of that rub off (laughs) on me. Jesus, that's what the anointing is, you know, to rub on something. I remember when I was teaching secondary school, I used to see kids come in in first year um, from all the primary schools round about. It was in a big secondary school. And you'd see them come in. I've shared this in Bible school before. And you'd see really sweet little boys, 12, 11, 12, little girls, and they'd, you'd see them get in with the wrong crowd. And as a teacher, you can't do anything much about that. You saw them getting in with the wrong crowd. So it was at the comprehensive school. We had licorice all sorts. You know, there was a lot of them. <laughs> and I would see very sadly these sweet little kids by the end of the summer of that following year radically changed. They'd got aggressive. They got rebellious. They dressed differently. They talked differently. Why? The, the influence of those kids had rubbed off. Whoever you hang around and absorb, you will get like. Watch the worldly friends. That's why we hang around Jesus. And then something of him rubs off on him. You know, peer pressure is what we talk about for our children. And that's exactly what it is. That stuff. And their spiritual baggage comes as well. Those spirits around those kids start to affect the children. So watch your children. But you know, he trained them for three years to start the New Testament church which is what we are now. You know, they came in at the beginning and they had tough times, the disciples. I believe we're in at the end. We're in times just like them. We are privileged to be the disciples of the end times because we're going to have to be a bit like them. And I hate to tell you, every one of them was martyred, but John. (laughs) But you know, they deemed it a privilege. Do you remember apparently biblical history said Peter was to be crucified and he said, crucify me upside down because I will not take away from my Lord. He was crucified. I I won't share in the death he had. Do it to me upside down. You know, that was the Peter who was in the courtyard. You know, that's the difference between baptizing the Holy Spirit and being a man of the word of God. It radically changed him. And you know, those men did such great things. And just to encourage you, you know, they had no Bible. They had the old, you know, the Torah, the Old Testament. And then all they had was what they remembered Jesus said. But Jesus said to them, you know, I think it's very interesting. He said, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit reminded them. And you know, when Peter preached his first sermon, he had 3,000 salvations in one go. That was some sermon. The Holy Spirit was working through him. Okay? So, you know, the word of God is powerful. And, you know, if they can do it, we can do it. You know, Paul and Silas, they they had the same sort of problem with the leaders. There was the unconverted Jews. They criticized them as well, but they complimented them as well. You know what they said? Look at these nuisances. They've been with that Nazarene guy. You know, look at them. They're just like him. But then they said, those who have turned the world upside down. You know, Paul on his donkey and his boat and his feet, we don't know how he got there. And Peter apparently got to Rome. They got to Europe. They managed to get to Europe. And because of that, we're here because of them. We're here because of their courage. We're here because of their bravery, their obedience, and their persistence. You know, it's quite remarkable. You know, we're connected with those people. There's no real time lapse. When we go to heaven, we'll be all sharing stories together. You know, we're in the end times, and we will face what they 
they faced, you know, except we have it easier. We have a Bible, we have teaching, we have technology, we've got the internet, we've got all the Facebooks and all these stuff that I can't be bothered. But it's so much easier for them. The gospel can go around the world in an instant. They had to walk day after day after day and risk their lives. But they did it, so we can do it. Surely, you know, if they turned the world upside down, surely we can. Now, the one thing that the word did for them, and I'll just finish with this. In John 15, 3, Jesus said to the disciples, and this was just before he, he went to be crucified. And the last thing you say before you're dying are pretty important. He said, you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. That word not only gave them wisdom and revelation and built them up in spirit, and they were now born again and spirit-filled, made a huge difference. But the words that Jesus spoke over those three, three years that he was with them cleaned up a lot of the baggage that they carried. And you know, we all carry baggage. We are born again. We get a brand new spirit, as you know. But we come into the Christian walk with a lot of baggage in our soul. Some of us more than others. Depends on your upbringing. Depends on your circumstances. People who have been abused and been in difficult circumstances have more baggage than others. But it's nothing to God. We all end up the same. I think Mark and Cynthia are a wonderful example of how you all end up the same. Cynthia was brought up in a wonderful Christian family. One of the finest churches in America and you know and taught in a Christian school. Mark was brought up in Dublin, had 12 or was it 16 years on drugs. He, you, know, he, you know he had a very exciting testimony but look at them now. They are the same. They're at the same level. It doesn't matter where you are. All that junk can go. He, he tried to commit suicide several times. And the final time he tried, the Lord intervened. I think he said the whole room filled with light. And he, he instantly was del instantly delivered from drugs. Next morning he threw it all out, all the drink out. And he went out and witnessed. You know, that is the power of God. So, you know, but we have soul baggage, and that is why, and I just was saying, what this is what these people have done. Romans 12, it says, 1 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't pattern your life against the world. My God, who would want to these days? Anyway, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what Jesus did with those men. He, he cleaned them up. It's that, that word means to prune as well. You know, when you prune something, you get rid of the dead wood, you get rid of the rotten bits so that new growth can come. That's what that cleaning up is. So transformation, which means total change, can only come to us when we get into the word of God. Total, you know, you get changed when you're born again. You'll make it into heaven, but you won't have much of a joyful ride in this earth. I know people who got born again and they did nothing about it. And, you know, you would hardly know. We'll see them in heaven, but, you know, life is not so good. So we trans get transformed by the word of God. Jesus said to his disciples, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you're in any bondage tonight of any kind, this will set you free. I was set free from a lot of anger. Now, my children might say she's not completely, but <laughs> you should have seen me before. <laughs> Joanna, I'll testify to that. I had a horrendous temper. I just had lost control. And it was the word of God, just confessing the word of God that set me free. It wasn't people praying with me, although I've been up for prayer to lots of people. But, I, you know, I was set. And you may think, well, that's not as bad as drugs. It doesn't matter. It is. Everything that's like a bondage is a bondage. So, you know, the truth, the word sets us free. So I encourage everybody here, and I encourage all these students who have so faithfully study the word. Never stop. Don't let that be a season in my life where I did that and I will do something else. You know, keep at it. Let it be your handbook for the rest of your life. And, you know, just encourage everybody else. In the days we live, we do need to know the word of God. It will keep us safe. You know, the safest place to be is in the will of God. And what's the will of God? The word of God. You know, if you know the truth of how much God loves you, really really loves you. He loves you no matter what. What you do or what you don't do. He's not pleased sometimes about what we do, but he loves us no matter what. 
that takes away our fear. If you know God is for you and not against you, if you know God will see you out of every difficulty you face, he said, no matter how bad things are, I will give you a way of escape. He always leads us in triumph. You know, if you know that, if you know he's your beloved father, he never takes your eye, his eyes off you for a minute, he watches you watchfully and lovingly, that takes away fear. If you know also if you've got some sickness in your body, if you know that healing is part of redemption. Jesus died for both sin and sickness. There's no difference. It's just we don't seem to believe it. If we, somebody comes and asks God for forgiveness, we believe they're forgiven. But we just have this thing about it. It's exactly the same. He forgives all our iniquities and he heals all our diseases. The word save in the New Testament also means physical healing. So, you know, we need to know that. He also, he wants us to be prosperous, financially prosperous. It was like John said, taken to extremes. I have three Rolls Royces. Well, you can only drive one at once, you know. I have 12 toilets in my bathroom in my house. We can only use one at a time. You know, wealth is not, we shouldn't want wealth for wealth's sake. But God doesn't want us to be poor, on the other hand. He wants us. To, you can't bless somebody if you have no money. We, you can't throw a crusade if you have no money. It's just that people abused it. And we have to be careful. So he wants us to be prosperous. Deuteronomy tells us that poverty is a curse. Okay? I came from a denomination church where it was a denominational church where it was humble to be poor. I remember when the rector of our church got a new car, I was shocked. <laughs> I thought that is so wrong. <laughs> Why couldn't the poor man? He was as good as anybody else, you know, but anyway. And also, you know, if you're going through a turmoil or a crisis, he always leads you in triumph. He'll get you out of it. You know, there is no problem. You know, God is the ultimate answer to everything. So, just as I said, get rid of the stinking thinking. That is the only way is in, in here. You know, why? Because he wants us to be his ambassadors. We are all, in this room, you are all ambassadors for Christ. And you know, and an ambassador, what does he do? He brings a bit of his country into your life. They're there to represent the, his, the, the country that you come from. Remember when the, I didn't see the second Israeli ambassador, I only saw the first one. I, it was so interesting. He brought a little bit of Israel. He had his little bit of Hebrew and he talked about, and then he said, Shalom. And then he, you know, they just bring a bit of their country on the scene. We should bring a little bit of heaven wherever we go. Yeah. Not a bit of hell. A bit of heaven. We should bring heaven on the scene. Okay? Strife is not a good thing. You know, we belong to heaven. We are kingdom people. Do you know, ultimately, it is all about the kingdom of God. That's why we're on the planet. We don't come. We all come from other different countries. But basically, we belong to heaven. We are God's people. We are kingdom people. And our heart should be to advance the kingdom of God. And that's why it is so important. You've got this new spirit. You need to get your soul cleaned up through the word of God so that the Jesus Christ who lives in you. You know, I, I just find sometimes just to meditate on the fact that Christ Jesus lives on the inside of me. Just think right now. You're sitting on your black seat there. Jesus Christ is living on the inside of you. When you go out of here, he's going with you. Yes. And I say to Bible school students, if you're watching something on TV that's not good, remember he's watching it with you. But we have Christ in us. We need to get our thinking in line with his so that he can actually work through us. You know, if he wants us to heal, if he wants us to deliver, and we're a bit hesitant, ah, I don't know if I believe in deliverance. My God, Jesus did. He did more deliverance than he did healing. You know, I don't believe in this. And I, you know, well, if it's in here, I'm sorry, change, you know. But, you know, if we don't, Jesus is stuck. The same Christ that healed all those people in here. The same Christ that will come in glory on his white horse is in you. He wants to use his power through you. If your thinking is contrary to the word of God, you're not going to, it's, it's not going to allow him to work. 
So, you know, can I just encourage you that we, it would be good for people to say, I can see that they've been with Jesus. You know, let, the only way we will fulfill the destiny he has, he has a great plan for all of us. Everybody in this room has a great plan. Different plans, but it's a great plan. The only way we'll do it is to know this word. To get into prayer with him, talk to him, love him, adore him, worship him, first of all, and get into this word. So we're going to turn now and just say congratulations to these wonderful people here. You know, I, I watched some of them. You know, I could see some of them were very tired. You know, they'd come from an early start in the morning and they probably had nothing to eat at the time. And they still came. You know, I find that very admirable and God you know it said study to show yourself approved to God God is showing his approval you know your daddy in heaven is proud of you all as we are proud of you all but you know as I said as I said to everybody I encourage you never stop because you have a great future you have spent your time being earnest and getting to know God and I say just never stop the devil hates when we get into the word of God because, you know, we find out who Jesus is and who he isn't and what he can't do. So, you know, just persist. Always make sure if you go to another country, if you leave, always find a church where the word of God is taught. And, you know, we believe that all of you would disagree that all of these people have a great future in God and they're going to make a difference for the kingdom of God. Amen? So we're going to get... Three brave people to come and share. They were told two minutes or they would get... <laughs> two minutes to share just what we said the Word of God did for you in that time. This is the first group that's done the whole course. We've had certificates for one level, two level, but they are the pioneers. They're the heroes who did a whole year. <laughs> a whole year and they've completed it successfully, some of them highly successfully. So who's going to start? Well we start with Lydia, I can't see for all these lights. Lydia? Oh, it was half an hour, John. Half an hour. Um. Yeah, this is different than singing. Don't think it's so easy to speak. Speaking is different. Um, what I want to say, it's like I never liked being in a school when I was young. And nobody likes it. But then when I uh, came to Ireland and I went, went back to college, as a mature student, I really uh, discovered that I really like learning. And that was... Um, Actually, my discovery was that the learning makes me discover um, different ways of thinking and learning how to see things from a different perspective. And I really started liking it more and more. Not only the subjects I really enjoyed, but the different things when I, were trying to, when I was trying to research and uh, study for my assignment, that really brought a different perspective to, to many different things I had no idea about. And um, before I was um, doing a, like a Bible studies online and, and the other things, but I was never really drawn into the Bible study. I was reading my Bible, but it wasn't really like studying the Bible. But when I, I started this uh, Bible school, it was, it was life transforming. It was amazing. And you know, especially when you have a teacher who really inspires you, when he was a teacher who brings everything to life for you, I discovered like as, as, as Pastor Jill said, in Bible, there are little treasures, there are little pearls, there are little jewels. You have to dig in. You have to dig like in the mines. They're digging to find the diamonds, to find the pearls in the water. They have to dive really deep. They're not there just, you know, displayed for you on a silver plate. You have to dig. You have to make an effort to really discover the little jewels. And for me, Word of God, I just read it even if I don't like, you know, I don't feel like it. I just read it every single day. And many times when I was going through depression and very tough times, it was a lifesaver for me. And because what I've learned here, I discovered so many new things. I had no idea they're in the Bible. I had no idea how how important is a blood blood covenant we have 
with God through what Jesus did for us. That was absolutely mind-blowing for me. And I discovered how powerful it is. And many other things, I'm not, I don't have a time to talk about everything. But, you know, I want to encourage you, if you're still hesitating about joining Bible course, don't. It's just life-changing. I just would like to say at this point, in case we forget at the end, we need to thank, well, the next person will come up for a minute. Um, thank all the teachers. I, I, there's Anne and Patricia here. Um, um, Ebony, Ebony here. Ebony here. Now Jackie. Yeah. Jackie does some too. She's now taken over. So give them applause, sorry. Um, Jackie does Thursday nights now with our own new believers, but Jackie was teaching, and she's a particular blessing, because if any of us fall by the wayside, she can take over anything. It's great. So we thank Jackie. We thank Mark and Cynthia, who are not here. Um, Ashlyn joined us briefly. Um, John and Joanna joined us as well, now and then. And who else did we have? I have, I have it written down. This is where you offend somebody too. Yes, um, Anne, Jackie, Ebony, Mark and Cynthia, Ashlyn, John, Joanna. I mean, that's it. And I, re I worked out. Yes, yes, Linda. Um, I said. <laughs> 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 um, I worked out there are ten. That's good. Ten people. Okay, the next one is going to be Patrick. Hello, church. <laughs> well, um, I can say about my experiences that when I first started uh, doing Bible college, it's because I wanted to know the Word of God in another language, as English is not my first language. So, but I didn't know that would be such a breakthrough in my life. Like, living abroad many times is, can be tough. Like, it goes for many ups and downs, but like every week, and I was here and then listen to the word of God and having those people spend their times to give us their best. And then it just helped me, my walking with Christ and to be the person I am now for the Bible college, because we learn so much from Lord. We, we learn, like, it's just, it's just amazing. Like the way, the way, um, how can I say? Uh, you apply those things in your life, and then you actually do this exercise that you learn in the Bible college. You do on a daily basis. So, and and then you also like it's everything for free. So you also have teas and coffee <laughs> for free, and then that's just is much better, you know. Like <laughs> that's make the whole difference. So. So yeah, guys, I encourage you, you guys that haven't done it yet, Bible College, you just come along and uh, learn the Word of God because I, I know myself when we, when we first meet Jesus, we were curious to know more about him, to know more about uh, his Word, to know more, like, to be like him, you know? So the only way is to learn his Word, you know, to learn what he had done and what he did for us. So it's like meditate every day in the word of God. It's just the only way you can succeed in your life and go to heaven. Amen. And just one more as Natusha. Um, I just want to encourage everyone here, um, regardless if you've if you're born again, if you've just uh, uh, come to know the Lord, or if you've known the Lord for I don't know ten years, um, I would encourage everyone to join the Bible study if you can, because you know sometimes you say, oh, I've been I've known the Lord for ten years, and I know everything about the Bible, so I, I'm okay. I don't need this. Uh, the Bible study is for people that just join but really it's for everyone you can you, you know there's so much you get you you're gonna learn with God like you can never say okay that's it like I know everything now I don't need you know to go to the Bible study but really you really you know if you have the chance you should really go and um, from my own personal experience going to the Bible study has really really helped me because um, yeah I've been coming to the church and yeah every Sunday but really 
it was I didn't really have a personal relationship with God. It was just going, to, you know, to the church, and you know, that's it. People are saying we're going to church, but my mom always said, you know, you have like to go to to have your personal relationship with God and going to the Bible study. You know, sometimes every time I, I would go through tough you know, times, the first thing I would do, I would do is run to my mom, mom, please pray for me, or I'll say, oh no, that sister or brother is praying for me, so that's okay. But, you know, going to the Bible study, it's really taught me that, you know, going to church is not enough. Like, you need to have your personal relationship with God. So if you have your, any trouble or anything, you go see God first. Don't run to, you know, it's good that you ask for prayer, but you should really go um, and see God first, and um, you know the the Word of God is really important. And if you put God first in everything you do, and if you love the the Word of God, He's really going to open doors for you, and He's going to take you places that you've never actually dreamt of, that you've never thought that you could do it by yourself, but by you know really um, going to the Bible study. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just nervous. <laughs> And reading the word of God, you know, God loves that when you spend time with him and another way of, you know, worshiping God and, and is, is going and, and reading the Bible because, um, you know, just like uh, w w when you need food to survive, obviously, if you don't eat, you get weak and, you know, uh, same uh, spiritually, if you don't eat, which is the word of God, um, you know, you get weak and when there is trouble and tough times, you just fall and you know you, you can't pick yourself up so I just want to encourage everyone just sign up if you haven't done it already it doesn't matter if your English is not good I promise the teachers will help you and if you have any questions they will help you so <laughs> There you go, we've got preachers there. Now, we're going to give out. Now, one or two people aren't here. Some people have gone on holidays. One, Rodrigo Menezes, has gone home. And Kira couldn't make it because she um, was away in Cork. She said she'd try, so she may appear. Anyway, so we're going to start. The first one is Elsha. There you go. Oh, to get a photograph. Hitesh.
We just could we get all the students up on the stage? Would that be okay? And the teachers as well. So the students and teachers up on the stage. We have a cake, so we'll just get a photo with the cake. Is the cake coming? Details will be up probably beginning of August and it'll start mid September. Okay, so we'll have everything up on August. Anybody from another church is welcome to come. You know, and it's, it's open to anybody, but anybody in here as well, obviously, welcome to come. So look, keep your eye on the internet probably beginning of August. Okay? Right. Okay. And can we just say a big thank you to Jill because she runs the Bible school and she puts so much time into it. Woo! Administration, which is a bit beyond me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. 